In the interconnected world of the 21st century, lines of code shape our daily life and are a crucial supporting pillar that holds the most vital services. Healthcare, traffic, military machinery, and much more. Ones and zeros have the power to shape destinies, most of the time for the better. But what happens when a software bug transcends the digital realm, leading to catastrophic consequences? On September 9, 1947, Grace Murray Hopper locked the first computer bug. But it wasn't a software bug, but rather a moth that was found inside of the Harvard Mark II computer. This was the first case of an actual bug being found. The term evolved throughout the years and is now being used to refer to flaws in a computer program that lead to unexpected results or crashes, as you will see in a moment. On the 4th of June 1996, the European Space Agency launched Ariane 5, a heavy-lift space launch rocket, which was carrying the Cluster spacecraft, a constellation of four research satellites. After the successful launch, things were looking promising, but after 30 seconds of flight, the rocket exploded. All of this because of a very simple, yet fatal software bug, an integer overflow. This bug occurs when you attempt to store a value inside an integer that is greater than its capacity. Ariane 5 was reusing code from its predecessor, Ariane 4, but the two rockets were different in design and flight path. This meant that certain values coming from the ship's sensors were higher than expected. One of those internal values, the horizontal bias, was declared as a 16-bit signed integer meaning that the maximum value that it could hold was around 32,000. With the new design, the sensors were reading greater values, which caused a data conversion from a 64-bit floating-point number, which led to overflow and hardware exception. The chain reaction that followed eventually led to self-destruction of the spacecraft. This bug resulted in a loss of more than $370 million, and it significantly halted scientific research for the next four years. I really like how Jamie Lynch from Backsnack summed this event up. Not enough space to reach space. We remain on the topic of space exploration, but this time the software bug affected the spacecraft not after 30 seconds, but after 10 months. The Mars Climate Orbiter was a robotic space probe launched by NASA on December 11, 1998. Its mission was to study the Martian climate, atmosphere and surface changes, as well as to act as a communications relay for a future Mars polar lander. It was launched at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and began its 669 million kilometer journey after a 42 minute burn sequence. After nine and a half months on September 23rd, 1999, Mars Climate Orbiter passed behind Mars, 49 seconds earlier than expected, and went out of radio. The communication was never re-established. The spacecraft encountered Mars at a lower than anticipated altitude, and it was either destroyed in the atmosphere or re-entered heliocentric space after leaving Mars' atmosphere. All of this because of an easily avoidable error. The primary reason behind the crash was that one piece of ground software supplied by Lockheed Martin, an American aerospace, technology and military corporation, was outputting results in US customary unit, so in miles, while NASA, based on its software interface specification, was expecting metric units, meters. This shifted the planned trajectory by 170 kilometers closer to Mars, which resulted in the failure of the operation. According to NASA, the cost of the mission can be summed up to an equivalent of $1 billion. The Millennium Bug, also commonly known as the Year 2000 problem, is a description for a number of bugs that occurred in computers around the world and were related to the formatting and storage of calendar data. In the early 70s, when computers were becoming more available, they were really expensive and one thing that could be optimized to save money was memory. It usually costed between 10 to $100 per kilobyte, so it was important for programmers to minimize usage. Very often, they did it by only storing the last two digits of the year of a date and simply prefixed the number 19. 
this was a problem by the turning of the millennium, because computer programs couldn't distinguish between dates 1900 and 2000. The predicted global damage was to be between 400 million and 600 billion dollars, and the lack of clarity regarding the real consequences of this bug led to mass panic with some people withdrawing money from banks, fearing banking system failures, as well as stocking on food, water and backup generators. The newspapers were making it seem as if it was a computer-induced apocalypse, but in reality the aftermath of the bug was manageable. Reported problems include a lot of bus ticket validation and dispenser machines failing around the world, a malfunctioning radiation monitoring equipment at a Japanese nuclear power plant. In the US, someone got a $91,250 late fee for a rented tape that was determined to be 100 years overdue, as well as a 100-year-old baby was born in Denmark. The Y2K bug was a real problem, but it definitely got more attention than it should, resulting in mass panic. The damage done was global, and the resulting cleanup was very expensive. It is estimated to be around $510 billion in preparation for Y2K and another $523 billion on remediation after the year 2000. And that's not counting all the resulting lawsuits. The Daharan Patriot failure. Bugs in banking and trading software might result in terrible monetary losses, but when a software bug appears in war machinery, like a rocket interceptor, the aftermath might be fatal. In February 1999, during the first Gulf War, 28 American soldiers died and 110 were wounded as a result of a malfunctioning code in the Patriot missile interception system. The role of this machine is to crash into incoming enemy rockets, thus making them explode mid-air before they reach the target. Due to the backed code, the internal clock drifted by milliseconds after every hour and since the system had already been running for 100 hours straight, that meant a delay response of one third of a second in a system so precise that has to track incoming SCAT rockets going 5400 km per hour. That was a huge delay and resulted in a 600 meter detection error. The Patriot missile battery managed to identify an object in the sky but didn't manage to track it due to the bug and thus the counter missile was never launched. This might be one of the deadliest software bugs in history that left 28 people dead and more than 100 wounded, almost 10% of all casualties in this conflict. That would be all for today's video. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this more serious style of videos and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. Remember to test your code and I will see you in the next video. Later.